Welcome to ADM 320. We're continuing talking about continuous random variables and looking at variables that are normally distributed. And there's a couple different things we can do. We can talk about the probabilities based around those random variables, or we actually can say, given a known probability area to the left, what value would have that area to the left, almost like back calculating it. The two functions that we'll be using in Excel 2010 will be the norm.dist function and the norm.ind function. So let's take a look at those. The norm.dist function in Excel 2010, you would have to use the period in there. But if you're in previous versions, like Excel 2007 or earlier, actually just drop the period and the function works exactly the same way. How does this actual function work? Well, if you know the mean and standard deviation of some random variable, continuous random variable, that you know it's normally distributed, usually mentioned in the problem, use this function to find the area to the left of that value. So the norm.dist have the inputs of the value, the mean, the standard deviation, and then at the end you always have to put in true. Remember, you're talking about a continuous curve. You're talking about a cumulative area to the left. So if this says cumulative, we have to say true. This will always give us the probability that of being less than or less than or equal to the value given. Only area to the left is what it gives. If you need area above a value, which would be area to the right, then you want to use one subtraction norm.dist in your cell. Because now, since the area of the curve adds up to 1, if you know the norm.dist function gives you area to the left, a 1 minus will give you area to the right. The two areas together have to add up to 1. So if you know one, you can get the other. And this function will only give you area to the left unless you put the 1 minus in front of it to get the area to the right. The second function we'll be looking at is norm.inv function. In Excel 2010, obviously we need the period. If you're in previous versions of Excel, you can drop the period. How does that work? Well, think of this as back calculating. Let's say somebody actually wanted to know the value that had an area to the left of a certain size. Um, the bottom 10% score on a test, the top 10% score on a test. All these is when you know the mean and standard deviation of a continuous random variable that you know is normally distributed. And this would go backwards. This would say, give me that area, the mean and standard deviation, and I'll actually give you the value. So it's kind of the opposite function to what norm.dist works. So let's do some problems. So you can see here, let's assume during a month, this actually came out of uh, CNBC in March 15, 2003. Let's assume during this month the American workers spent on average 77 hours logged into the internet while they were at work. Assume that the population mean is 77 hours and that the times themselves are normally distributed, have that bell-shaped curve with a standard deviation of 20 hours. The first question it asks us is what is the probability that a randomly selected worker during this time spent fewer than 50 hours logged on the internet? So if you think about it, it's really asking us to find the probability that X is less than um, 50. Well, the nice thing about that is if I think that through, that's the area to the left. So I know since I have a continuous random variable with a mean of 77 and a standard deviation of 20, that if I want to answer that question, all I have to do is use the norm.dist function. So I'm going to go here where I have my part A answered label, put an equal sign in, norm.dist. Remember, it has inputs. If you can't remember the inputs, then you can always hit the function key itself, and it will tell you what the inputs are. So hit that function key on the left, and it'll open up and tell, uh, usually ask you what the functions are. This one, obviously, I'm not typing something in um, for it to tell me what the functions are. On it. There it is. Um, once you hit, have it actual all the way typed in, which is what I wasn't doing, then it tells you the inputs and it tells you the order. It wants to know what x value we're talking about. We're here, it looks like it's 50. So I can actually just type in 50. It wants to know the mean, which is 77. It wants to know the standard deviation, which if you remember the problem is 20. I want to know if it's cumulative. Now remember here that if I'm looking at a continuous random variable, I have to say true every time. It's not like discrete. Discrete Obviously, you can go back and forth between true and false, depending if you want to accumulate up to that x value or not. In continuous random variables, you must have it as being true. You can see here, if I hit OK, it'll actually answer the question. It gives me a lot of decimal places, so I'm going to take it down to 3. It looks like it's 0.089.
So it's less than 9% chance. Now, you don't need to convert to a percent unless the question asks you to. So don't automatically convert to a percent. You really don't need to. Probability is between 0 and 1 inclusive. So 0.089 is appropriate answer to this question. Now let's look at problem B. Problem B says, what is the probability that a randomly selected worker spent more than 100 hours logged on the Internet? Obviously, that's above the mean because the mean's at 77. So now if I'm looking for more than 100 hours, I'm actually looking area to the right of 100 on this specific normal curve, which has a mean of 77 and a standard deviation of 20. So I know that I can't just use the normal norm.dict function alone. I have to actually think through the fact that that gives me area to the left. And in this problem, I want area to the right. I actually want the probability that x is greater than 100. And I know the only way to do that is to actually do 1 minus the probability that x is less than 100. So I actually have to do 1 minus uh, the norm.disc function here if I'm actually going to answer the question they want, which is area to the right of 100. So I'm going to put an equal sign, 1 minus norm.disc. Once I get the function in, and I have my friend there, and it's asking me to put the functions this way, I can just hit that function key and just type them in this way. And we know the x is 100, the mean was 77, standard deviation was 20 in this question, and remember, it's normal distribution. We want this to be true. Now, it looks like it's just under 12.5%. Kind of scary if you think about it. Based off, this is based off of some real data, but that indeed is the answer. So let's get this down to three decimals, and we have our answer to that one. It's actually more likely that someone spent more than 100 hours than it is likely someone spent less than 50 hours. So let's put part C. Part C says, how many hours did a worker have to be logged into the Internet to be in the top 10%? Top means of all, of all, the highest times. So actually we're looking at a different function, because remember, the norm.dist function works on probability. This question has asked, asked us to find the x. So this says find the x when the area to the right of it is 0 0.10. That's only what it's asking me to find. So I'm thinking this through a little bit, and I'm saying to myself, norm.dist won't find that. I actually am back calculating. I know the area. I want to know the value. And we know from looking at that earlier, that's the norm i and v function. So I actually have to say equal norm dot inv, and now I have to think through these inputs. It wants the probability, but remember, it needs to know the probability left, and all I know is the probability to the right is 0 0.10. But the nice feature is I actually do know it's 1 minus 0 0.10. I know the area under the curve adds up to 1. So if someone tells me the area to the right is 0 0.10, I know right away that the area to the left is 1 minus 0 0.10, which is really 0.9. The mean in this problem is 77, standard deviation is 20. <laughs> so that comes out to be about 102.63 hours. When you spend that much time on the Internet, you're now in the top 10% or more. And I can just fix this down to something realistic. So when you're given a value and asked for probability, remember we were using the norm.dist function. But when you're starting to be given a probability, an area, and you want to know what, what value that area happens at, you have to use the norm.inv function. Let's look at the last problem. Last problem says, assume there's 200 workers. How many workers would be logged to the Internet more than 80 hours? Well, I'm really thinking this through in two ways. <coughs> the first thing I have to look at is, what's the probability you're going to be logged into the Internet more than 80 hours? Once I have that probability, I'm going to have to multiply it to the 200 workers to know how many. So let's first find the probability that x is greater than 80 hours. And then we'll be ready, once we have that answer, to actually answer how many out of the 200 would we have expected to be logged into the Internet more than 80 hours. So since it's probability that x is greater than 80, I know I have to do a 1 minus in front of my norm.dist function because that function alone only gives you the area to the left, and we need area to the right to get part of this question going. So I'm going to do an equals 1 minus norm.dist. Open up my functions. Once I have the friend in there, it'll let me open up. I'm going to put in the 80, the mean of 77, standard deviation of 20, 
and of course cumulus of is true. That has only answered the probability, it hasn't answered the total question, but with this part, I can now answer the question. I can actually say that if I take equals the 200 uh, workers and multiply it to the probability that you're going to be more than 80 hours, I'll know out of that 200, how many do I expect to be more than 80 hours? And you can see here, going to a whole number, it's 88 workers. You really can't have a part of a worker, so it's always a good idea when you're talking about discrete random variables and you're answering a question about it, that you actually indeed do round it to a whole number. So hopefully this uh, video is helpful. Remember, this helps you understand the norm.dist function, but also the back calculated function called norm.inv.